Let's take a look at a cryptographic hash function that is widely used in Solidity, Ketchup 256. Some of the use cases are to sign a signature, come up with a unique ID, and it can also be used to create a contract that is protected from front running. This is called commit reveal scheme. In this video, we will focus on how to use the Ketchup 256 hash function. I'll create a function called hash. The Ketchup 256 hash function can take any inputs. For this example, we'll pass in a string, memory, text. We'll also feed in a uint, uint num, and why not an address, address addr. This function will be external, peer, and the output of a ketchup 256 hash function is bytes32. So we'll return bytes32. To call the ketchup 256, we type ketchup. 256 parentheses and inside the parentheses we need to put in bytes as input however these inputs are not in bytes so we first need to encode it into bytes by typing in abi dot encode you can use encode or encode packed here for this example i'll use encode packed and later i'll explain the difference between encode and encode packed moving on inside the encode packed function we'll pass in these parameters. So text num addr. The function abi.encode packed will return a byte, and this bytes will be the input of the function ketchup 256 which returns a bytes32. Let's run an example of this hash function. I'll compile the contract and then deploy it. Expand the hash function contract, and we'll pass in some parameters. For example, for the first example, we'll pass in AAA. The second input is a num, one, two, three. And the third parameter is an address. So I'll just copy this address over here and then paste it here and then call the hash function. And that is the 32 bytes hash of these parameters. Now, if I were to change the parameter even by a little bit, for example, replacing the last A with a B and then calling the hash function again, Notice that the output changed significantly. That is the property of a cryptographic hash function. You change the input a little bit, and the output changes a lot. And also, given an output, it is extremely difficult to find what the inputs were. Next, I'm going to explain the difference between ABI encode and ABI encode packed. The reason that I'm explaining the difference between ABI encode and ABI encode packed is that there is a situation where you can have a hash collision meaning that the inputs are different, but it hashes to the same output. So first, let me explain the difference between ABI encode and ABI encode packed. ABI encode encodes the data into bytes, whereas ABI encode packed also encodes the data into bytes, but it compresses it. The output will be smaller and it will lose some of the information that was contained in ABI encode. Let me show you an example. So I'll create a function called encode, and it's gonna take in a string, memory, text zero, and also we're gonna take in another string, memory, text one, external peer, and returns, ABI encode returns bytes, so return bytes. And then we'll type return ABI dot encode text zero, text one. I forgot to put bytes memory for the output, so I'll do that right now. And we also create another function called encode packed, passing in the same inputs, but instead of calling ABI encode, we'll call ABI encode packed. I'll copy this function, paste it here, rename the function to encode packed. The inputs will be the same, and the outputs will be the same. The function that we're going to be calling is ABI encode packed. Compile the contract, then we'll redeploy the contract. Scroll down, expand the contract. We'll call encode and then encode pack, passing in the same inputs. The inputs are strings, so for the first input, I'll pass in AAA, and for the second input, I'll pass in BBB. Call encode, and that is the output that we get. Now we'll do the same for calling encode pack. Copy the inputs, paste it into encode pack, and then call encode pack. Scroll down a little bit, and notice that the outputs are a little bit different. Here we see 4 run, 4 run, 4 run, followed by 4 2, 4 2, 4 2. And we also see the numbers 4 run, 4 run, 4 run over here, followed by a bunch of zeros. And at last, 
say it's 424242. So encode just encodes data into bytes, whereas encode pack compresses these data. Now, why am I telling you the difference between encode and encode packed? Well, this is because there is a situation where we can create a hash collision. The output of the hash is the same, even though the inputs are different. And this will happen when we pass in two dynamic data types next to each other inside the function encode packed. And to show you this, I'll go back to the example contract. And notice that our input so far is AAA and BBB. Now I'm going to add another A and then call encode packed. That is the output. Now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take the last A and provide it as an input for the second string, A. So we're replacing the last A for the first input and prepending it to the second input. Call encode packed again. And notice that the output is still the same. Since the outputs are the same, this means that if we were to ABI encode pack two strings and then call catch act 256, so hashing AAAA BBB and hashing AAA and ABBB will output the same hash. Two different inputs, but the same output. To show you this, I'm going to create a function called collision. And for the input, it's going to take in two string, string memory text zero, string memory text one. This function will be external peer returns bytes 32. And we'll return catch 256 of abi dot encode packed text zero text one. So notice two things. We're using ABI encode packed and we're passing in two dynamic data types next to each other. Compile the contract and then redeploy the contract. And we'll call the function collision with inputs AAA and ABBB. Call collision. That is the output. Now we'll change the input a little bit. Take the first A in the second input and append it to the first input. Call the function collision again. And notice that the output has not changed even though we've changed the inputs. So this is an example of a hash collision. To fix this hash collision that occurs when you pass in two dynamic data types into the function ABI encode packed, we can either replace the function ABI encode packed with ABI encode. Alternatively, if you have other inputs to your hash function, you can rearrange the input so that no dynamic data types are next to each other. For example, let's say that this hash function takes in another uint, I'll name it x, then what you want to do here is in between the two dynamic data types, text 0 and text 1, pass in the input x. Compile the contract, and I'll show you an example of this fix. Deploy the contract again. Again, we'll pass in AAA, and the second input is a number, so I'll pass in 1, 2, 3. And the third input, I'll pass in ABBB. Call the function collision. That is the output. Next, we'll change the input of the two strings. So we'll put A at the end of the first input and remove the A from the second string. Call collision again. And notice that the hash changed. So that is how you can avoid hash collision when you're using ABI encode packed with multiple dynamic data types.